partners from the six regions of Nigeria, they progress to the grand finale, mm -hmm. which is what is going to happen next week. So I was saying that uh, we are happy that two of our winners um, last year, they have been able to get admission, uh, they have been able to get scholarship into um, secondary schools based on their performance last year. Mm -hmm. Because That's these right. two winners, Philip Favor and Joshua, they were the overall winner for Nigeria and they represented Lagos State. So mm -hmm. these are some of the things that make us happy because apart from the fact that um, these students, we are increasing their abilities in the area of uh, speaking, spelling, um, spelling writing, writing. In, in addition to that, they have the support of volunteers from Lafarge Africa who go into schools to really help these children, you okay. know, to be able to bridge these gaps. Okay, what kind of prizes do you give them? There's a monetary aspect. Mm -hmm. They do get, they get a prize. Um, we give them some tools. We give the schools some tools. We continue to work with the schools as well in terms of promoting and making sure that culture of learning continues at a sustainable level. Okay, but you don't give them a scholarship. But we you expose them. Them. No, the, the, yeah. the money we do give them is put in a trust. Ah. And the reason we deliberately put it in a trust is to ensure that it's actually judiciously spent on okay. what we need it to be spent on. The trust is, um, who manages the trust, the parents or the, the school? Bank. A bank. The bank. We give it to a bank, a third independent party. No. Okay, let me put it this way. Is it the, when the bank manages it, who accesses it, the school or the parents? We work with an implementation partner called the OBF or VA Burme Foundation and they're one of the implementation partners in terms of making sure that as you just the point you're making is judiciously spent and managed and we do monitor it. Okay. And as you just mentioned, the outcome has started to, to manifest. Okay, you say you just finished the regionals. So yes. how does this program run? You go to, just run us through. Let's just say okay. a school in um, in a rural area in uh, what? Let's use Medugui, far north to the right, um, Sokoto the other way, and then okay. how does that run? Just uh, if I do miss anything out, there's um, we run it across six the six geopolitical zones. And from the north to northeast, the south, the southeast, the southwest. So we run the regionals within the states. It's um, in each school, obviously, that um, participates that wins. We ensure that the regional finals within those regions are conducted in the same format as how we run the finale, whereby there will be a competition, there will be a judge, a panel, and we'll make sure that they also have, as I mentioned, the essay writing as well. The entire process is more or less the same across all is the regions. Is it the Ministry of Education in each state that manages We collaborate project? with them, yes, of course. Okay, so, but what I was asking is, how is it done? Is it like an exam in each, in, in the school? You said from primary five, right? Yes. So is it like an exam? So every student in primary five to six is allowed to be a part of it, and then they write the exam, the results are picked up from there, you work with the Ministry of Education to put it together, the winner goes up and all. Okay. How's it? Okay, so um, what we have done differently this year is to introduce state level competitions. So in each state, they hold the competition and um, winners from the states, it's important for us to say that we work with the State Universal Basic Education okay. Commis uh, Board, okay. you know, in terms of educational arrangements in Nigeria, those are um, the commissions that are responsible for okay. education. So we work with SUBEB. So for each state, um, we conduct the competition, two winners emerge, a, bo a female and a male, and then they proceed to the, gr to the regional competition. So for each region, um, we have typically six states in the region. So they, because they have done their um, state competitions, those winners come to the region they and compete. then they compete at that, at that level. Okay. So the winners from the regions, two, there will be two winners from each region. Then they now come to the grand um, finale. Okay, so for the final, for the grand finale, you have 12, 12 students, students. Represent two from each. And I just want yeah. to mention the reason why we specifically in demand um, a boy and a girl. Obviously, we want to make sure that there's that equilibrium achieved, and obviously, we know about in trying to in increase the girl-child okay. education. But what well. if you get <laughs> you don't get a boy <laughs> and a girl? You get two girls, or you get two boys from a state? We make sure that when they do um, enter the competition, we have an equal equal. Uh, Representation, representation in terms of gender. So that's, what, that's how we've been able to maintain, and it hasn't uh, failed us yet. Okay. Now, the staff of Lafarge Africa donated uh, or volunteered about 6,212 hours at public schools. Yes. What for? Sustainability. It's also part of our core value. 
and we talked about education and why do we do this. We, uh, even within our organization, we try and encourage the culture of, of, of that sustainability. As we've, as we've just mentioned, we're in a state of crisis from an education standpoint. Personally, we encourage, um, quite frankly, um, staff to go out and work with schools. And just like you said, we don't just wait until the period of the competition. So we go into schools, we read with them, we have conversations with them, we do a lot. We even help with building some of the schools or renovating some of the schools. And it's all part of the volunteering culture that we have, and that sits under our sustainability 2030 plan. Okay. So 6,212, is that for this year alone? That's a cumulative the amount. Cumulative. It's a cumulative total. Up till? Over about yes. five years. Yes. Up till 2030. Yeah. Mm. So you go there, read How with much the of children. that do you personally do? Okay, so um, as part of my performance assessment, as an example, I basically volunteer about 40 hours in a year. And these hours are official man hours, meaning that it's recognized by the company. The company allows its employees to really go out because what we try to achieve is that we don't want it to be only monetary um, involvement by the organization. We want to also be able to dedicate our time to really develop the society. But I just want to say as well, above and beyond that, she does a lot and so do I and I think a number of our employees do a lot more outside of that. So that's also part of you know people's personal motivation as well. So it's important for you to understand that it's not just about the company encouraging it. It's something that we've now sort of been vibed in everyone, yeah. whereby I personally coach and mentor young teens. That's something I do outside of work. And it's just something I've always done. And I seek, obviously, derive a lot of satisfaction, especially when you see them becoming the best that they can possibly be. And I know she's involved at her church yeah. with a number of uh, children that she works with. Yeah. And quite frankly, if you factor that across the what, almost 2,000 employees that we do yeah. have, I don't think you could actually count those numbers. Yeah. Okay, oh, as we wind down, um, why you, you've talked about the fact that you wanted to start small and take them up to, would you monitor these children up to tertiary and then graduation or the moment they're done with secondary, you're done with them? Uh, we have a plan to mentor them. And one uh, new thing that we're introducing is as part of our volunteering, we are trying to assign our managers to start working with our past winners. So we would assign someone to a child and they'll monitor their progress over a period of time. Okay, okay so yeah, the finals are um, next week? On Thursday. In Lagos? November 16th, yes, at Echo okay. Hotel. And um, yes, it's um, it'll be streamed live, I understand, as well. So it's um, certainly going to be uh, a very, very uh, impactful uh, event. What time is it? 11. 11. 11. 11 um, are you throwing the invitation open to viewers? Yes. Yes. Like we said, it's going to be yeah. online. Um, we have a number of uh, other stakeholders we're inviting this year. I remembered, um, as I mentioned, the, the, the theme, Bridging the Literacy Gap Together, Deliberate. So this year, I would in encourage everyone to, to watch and, and um, participate as best as they can. Watch and come. If they can participate, then yes. come. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All we can do just wish you all the best Thank on Thursday. Much. And, Thank you very uh, much. And say well done. This is very timely. Very, very <laughs> education. <laughs> All right, we've been speaking with Fola Shade Ambrose Medebem, Director of Communication, Public Affairs, Sustainable Development, Lafarge, and Temi Tokwe Oguntokun, Head, Corporate Brand and Sustainability, Lafarge. Thank you, ladies. Thank you very Thank much. We wish you well. Thank you Thank very you. much. Sunrise will be back shortly, and Janet's in the house.